How you doing, guys? Bill Calhoun here. About your brain and your body. And guess who I met? Bring it on, dude. Tell my peeps. Hi, hello, Singaporean. Uh, hi, Singapore. My name is Ruzani Hassan. I'm 47 years old. Yes, <laughs> we we worked together, and we were together. And this guy, he look at the, look how sharp he is, and he's thinking about coming back in yeah. to the whole. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right? Yes, ahead. yes, Bill. Uh, today, today is my first time after a very long time, at least about 10, 15 years ago, and uh, and it's because of my son. Your son? My son. My son now is an MMA champion and a hip hop champion, and uh, I have I have a lot of kids though. Uh, by the way, by the way, that's how I keep going. But I'm 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 retired for at least 10, 15 years. I'm not keeping care of myself. But one day, my son say, "Papa, we are the champion." Who are you? Oh my God! He did not know what I do before, and it doesn't matter. My words doesn't mean anything. I have to prove it. Inshallah, next year I'll be Excellent. coming back for the master. Muhammad, go for it, man. We're gonna go on. We're gonna be speaking with Kim right now because she's probably really pissed off if she's watching us because you took her spot. Okay, it's not my oh fault. My it's spot. It's spot. Oh it's my spot. Oh my God! I apologize. So we'll, we'll come back. Oh though, my man. God! We'll come back. We'll come back. Nice we'll to see you, man. Nice to see you. Too. Okay. We're gonna see you inside, man. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, see now, you. how do we get in? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Okay, got side, it. You know? All right, Kim, we're we'll coming after you. Right yeah. there. All right, man. Take care. Talk to you soon. Okay, guys. So, like I said, what we're doing is we're getting ready to go inside the Nexus Center. This is um, WBPF. This is the World Bodybuilding Fe uh, uh, <laughs> Physique. <laughs> We're, we're moving in here. I don't know where I'm going. This is my first time here as well. So let's just check it out. Okay. So, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking with Kim. And I'm not quite sure. So anyway, folks, we're getting ready to go upstairs and speak with Kim, um, Madeline, and this is so wicked. So do you get, let me ask you guys something. Have you, if, you, if you haven't typed in any comments in the comments below, go ahead and do that because I want you guys to ask some questions. Ask her some questions and let's just check out what's going on, okay? All right, we're getting ready to go up in the elevator right now, so I may lose you in just a moment, okay? So like I said, if you haven't had an opportunity, come on down here. World Bodybuilding Physique Federation from 2 o'clock until 7 p.m. today. This is in Singapore, and so we want to get that. What's going on? We got some comments coming in? I have my master crew person behind the camera here. All right, so let's go on up and check that So, okay, now, these guys are going to be naked, okay? Naked. That means body, flesh. It's gonna be wonderful, okay? For all the girls out there and for all the guys, the women are gonna be partially naked, okay? <laughs> but for real, let's go. Let's go check this thing out. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be so crass. So, so we're gonna be going in right now. This is the place right in this door right here. It's Nexus. Can you just take a shot of that? You see, and all these people are waiting to go in because it doesn't start until 2 o'clock. Let's go look for Kim. guest of honor to address the uh, audience about our WPBF and ABBF movement in Singapore. And also we have a very good friend, the president of the uh, Cambodian Bodybuilding Federation. Excellent. Who flew down all the way to officially as a judge. And I'm very excited that uh, this competition is uh, 
gathering momentum. And uh, there are many good athletes who I saw. Those, some of them are not competing, but they are definitely going to make a comeback. Yes. And uh, this is going to be a very, very big, major breakthrough for our WBPF and ABPF in Singapore. Dr. Chua is the man. Can, do you want to go ahead and put in some words? Rest, Can I scoot over here? Yes. Come on, let me go. Oh, yeah. Come on. Yes. How you doing? Uh, all good. Rest. Bill Calhoun, man. Right? Yeah, the buff man, right? The buff man. Yeah, the buff man. Bill, I just buff man. Buff man. Buff man. Buff man. Buff man. We're doing it, man. Hold on. Right. Let me, let me, let me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you go. Go ahead and tell everyone your name and tell uh, them how you're involved in this. Uh, my name is Raz. My real name is too long to say, but just Raz is fine. <laughs> no, say it. I want, I want to be here. My name is Raz May Sok Mongkol from Cambodia. I'm the president of the Cambodian Bodybuilding and Fitness Federation. And I'm here to support the uh, WPF in Singapore by being a special guest judge. So I've got myself and a couple of supporters from Cambodia to support this event. So Raz, let me ask you something. Um, Cambodia. The, the federation over there, how how is it different than what's happening here in Singapore? You guys all united, so is Dr. Twa and yourself coming together to run this, or are they independent? Oh, no, uh, Cambodia is under the leadership of uh, AWBF and WPF, and we have the godfather of uh, bodybuilding, you know, so I've been president for five years, and under uh, the guidance and leadership of Dr. Dato, okay, we're slowly bringing in uh, things together, and Next year we'll be hosting the 15th Southeast Asia Bodybuilding Championships in Cambodia. In Cambodia. So yes. that means everyone, and so Southeast Asia would involve which countries now? Uh, the, the major powerhouses, uh, Thailand, Vietnam, okay, they're the two major powerhouses. And then you've got Singapore, Malaysia, you've got Myanmar, you've got ourselves. And then uh, we've got some uh, brothers in Philippines, Timor uh, and Laos, which we uh, hope they would come and make representations as well on that. So, uh, overall, the, uh, that's us in countries. So, yeah, some of them do have federations, but don't have any athletes. When like that, yes. That's wonderful. So what Raz is saying, you see, folks, everyone back um, in California, my piece back in California, this is a whole other thing. This is Asia. So in California, for example, you may have Los Angeles, you may have San Francisco, but that's only the western uh, country, I'm sorry, western state of California. Out here, you're talking about entirely different cultures, everyone coming together. And these guys move all that stuff out here, which is really quite fascinating. Now, Raz, um, very quickly, in terms of bodybuilding, it wasn't always um, a thing, right, for Asia. What, what actually made that, that switch over? Why did people start getting involved in uh, well, A lot of it's got to do with the health benefits of bodybuilding and uh, uh, kind of the sport, you know, like Cambodian, I can only speak for, say, Cambodia. Before it was just predominantly a rice and fish diet, and then you can't get really big on that. And then as influence of uh, the Western uh, companies that come into Cambodia, they're getting uh, bigger and bigger and bigger, and then along comes the... Uh, What's called problems with that, and then so the, the movement to eat healthy, to get fit, to get you know, that's it came along with that, and then the how we call it, supplement companies coming into Cambodia as well, you know. So, yeah. excellent, excellent, folks. This is Raz, this is Dr. Twa. Yeah. Sir, I missed you. Yeah, he, he speaks a little English, he speaks a little English, he's from Cambodia. Maybe just say, say something, yeah. okay, okay, yeah, okay. Say something. <laughs> Wait, let, me, let me get over here, let me get over here, let me get over here, okay? Yeah. How you doing, what's your name? My name's Supan. Supan, okay. Yeah, yeah. Supan, just go ahead and just go ahead and tell them something. Anything, anything you want to do. Mao Mao Singapore, Dom Bay, Talk to your people out there, man. Okay, Dom. He says that uh, he's happy to come and join uh, 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 the competition and just come and have a look at it. He's one of the supporters of bodybuilding and he is one of the patrons of uh, the bodybuilding in Cambodia. You know, so, and I brought him along here just to see uh, the excitement uh, of bodybuilding so how next year he can hopefully financially support <laughs> Cambodia. You know. yeah, so. Fantastic. Thanks, guys. Okay, guys, so this is Raz. This is Dr. Chua. This is Sopa. Sopa, okay? These guys, look, and they look so good, too. You guys are all like, and I am here in my jeans and all this kind of hanging out all over the place. But of course, I've got to keep doing this kneeling, squatting, standing, and stuff like that. So I have an excuse. These guys just sit here and they just reverberate 
energy. Ooze. 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 Ooze the energy, guys. That's what it's about. And you know what? You know what, folks? Everyone in there is going to be thinking, oh my gosh, I hope they vote me in. I hope they vote me in. I hope they vote. So they carry the power. That's why they can just sit out here and just hang. And that's why we're hanging with them, folks. All about raw. Okay, guys. We're going to go back and find Kim. Good. Okay. Let's go get Kim because she's really pissed because I'm so late. Okay, guys. See you later. Nice to meet you. Okay. 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 You're from California, right? Pardon? Yeah. Davis, California. And I can tell you have some Australian in there. Absolutely. It's like I'm sitting over here going, okay, Cambodia, and I'm listening and I'm thinking maybe my audio is off. You know that? Do you know what? Uh, me and the bathmate have in common. We share the same barber. Oh, <laughs> exactly. What a cheeky There you go. There you go. All right. What Thank a you. All right, man. Let's go find you guys. So, guys, this is the hall. We're gonna go look for Kim because we're like really super late. Kim, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry. and see if we can find her down here. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. Okay, guys. Sorry. Okay, so what we're going to do, folks, is we're right here, and um, we're looking for Kim right now. Kim, if you're out there, we're live with you. We're going to look for you right now. But, folks, do you know where Madeline is? The, Kim. Kim. Madeline. The Angmo lady. Oh, no. Uh, I'll ask for you. I'm okay. Thanks. Okay. So, uh, uh, how you doing, Rob? Hi, brother. How are you? Hi. Thank you. Great guys, remember we talked about Mahabha then yesterday. We're looking for Kim. By the way, look, check it out. This is the stage. This is where it all happens. And if you just take a look around here, this is the auditorium. They haven't started letting people in yet, but everything is going to happen. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how nervous these guys must be when they go? Um, everything. Can you imagine what's going to happen when they get nervous when they go? So, folks, we're getting ready to go backstage right now. We're going to talk to some folks. Yeah. I'm just going to have, check it out. trying to find how to get backstage and we're finding the toilets. And we have the guys over here on this side. Okay. Okay. We're checking out over here folks. You mind if they come in? Can you come in? Okay, so what we're doing, we're looking for Magdalene. Kim? Guys, this is this is the back behind the scenes. And there's Kim. Okay, we're gonna get, we'll be back. Okay. Nice to meet you. So sorry. Folks, this is Kim. This is Mad Kim. Okay, did you want to go outside and talk? Sure. 
where it's a little bit. Yeah, outside the toilet, no. Yeah, I know. This is kind of weird, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're outside. But hey, you know, it's Facebook Live, it's raw, so okay, what the heck? Are we on okay. live now? Yes, we are. Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We're late. We're like stuck in traffic. But Folks, I have to adjust my hair. Uh, okay, Kim is going to adjust her hair, so you guys just cover your eyes. Don't look. And she makes herself beautiful, even more beautiful than she No, it's okay. Okay, where, we, where, where do you feel comfortable standing? You can sit down, just stand. Probably sitting now. Come on, So, folks, as we mentioned, this is Kim's spot. This is what we're going to be doing. We're going to find out all kinds of things. It's going to be great. All right, here. All right. Mine? Yes, this is great. Here, why don't you sit right here, Kim? Yes. Okay. What about you? I'll, I'm going to sit next oh, okay. to you over here. Okay. <laughs> Evelyn, you can just come right there because the sound may be there. Right. So, okay, Kim, so we're live here, okay? So just don't worry about it. We're just, it's going to be raw, probably mess up, and I'll probably enunciate things incorrectly or whatnot, but that's not what it's about. It's about you and about all of the things that you've done, what you plan on doing. But first... It would take a few hours, though. <laughs> okay? We're going to take the summarizer. Okay. But first, everyone wants to know why you're mad. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, my mom gave me this name, uh, Madeline, but in short, from young, everyone calls me Matt. And uh, when I grow up, at a later age, I realize that Matt stands for another purpose, which is making a difference. Which making is a difference. why I'm created here to be, yeah, making a difference. So what does that mean? Um, I, can I call you Kim or should I call you Madeline? Matt. Just call you Matt. Yeah. Okay, mad person. Yes. Okay. I live up to my name, though. Okay. So you don't mind that. No, that's I don't mind. That's pretty cool. Yes. Okay. So you said to live up to your purpose. What is that purpose? What is it that you want people to know about your ultimate purpose? My purpose is to make a difference in not my life, but somebody else's life. But through my life and whatever things that I do, uh, to get people inspired. It doesn't mean that they have to do the same thing as me. But uh, it's just to trigger their thought and to trigger them to get into action. Mm -hmm. And um, especially in fitness, I believe that getting strong, thank you, uh, getting strong is like um, to be ready to help someone. Then, you know, people think that fitness, bodybuilding is all about self, self, self. Yeah. But to me, it's not self. But first of all, you need to take care of yourself. Then you can be able to be there for somebody else. So let me ask you, Matt, what are some of the things that um, women, for example, have an issue with that getting involved in fitness like you've done could perhaps help them overcome those challenges that they have? Uh, okay, I think basically, I would say between a female and a male, there's a difference. Uh, probably it takes more time, more effort for a female to get uh, the results that they want. And I think most important is patience. Uh, be patient, meaning to say it's like, okay, I'm on diet, I'm on a fitness, you know, program, but I'm not seeing results. So it's like, how, how many days are you on diet? Oh, four days. Okay, then you know, I'll be like, okay. So be patient. What, is that, what does that mean when you say, okay? What, what do you actually it's like? What is what is dieting in four days when you are eating shit for forty years? <laughs> Okay, you know, okay. something like this, okay. yeah. So, uh, give yourself some time, at least a month, to see really um, results showing. Because I believe that if you truly, you know, uh, put your heart in, every day you see results, day in and day out. Be it physical, spiritually, you know, mentally, there, there is some changes taking place. So, when you mention spiritually, and you mention physically, and you mention nutritionally, yes. How do all of those stack up as importance in terms of nutrition, your physicality, your activity, or your spirituality? I would say spiritual. Why? Because um, the inner spirit is of most important. If you don't find peace with yourself and um, you, if you don't find a value in yourself, you will not know, um, you know, like what you want to do in this world. So first of all, you need to find your own identity. You need to know your purpose of being here. If you if you you are here for forty years and you have not known what is your purpose in life, you need to go and search for it. Okay, until then you know what you are created for. Then you can unleash you know your potential from within. And uh, spiritual, I think, comes first. 
uh, of course, fitness is very important, physical. And nutrition, I think it makes up a very important part. Mm -hmm. I'm here with my nutrition bag, mm -hmm. though I am, you know, I'm here for the show, but I still bring my six pack bag right. because I am on a, a competition prep now. I know. We're going to get yes. to that in just a moment, but I want right. to, uh, let's go back to spiritual for just a moment. Yes. Now, you've got it all locked in, right? You, you, you pretty much know, and you're always tweaking it, I'm sure, yes. um, yourself. You know what you need to do, you know what you need not to do. But for people, especially women, Okay? Because we were all about guys yesterday, and I, I really, I really want to reach out to my female followers here, okay. because many of them have these challenges. They may be saying to themselves, "Well, gosh, you know, I don't know how to start. I don't have anyone to start with." Uh, what would you recommend to them in order to get above and beyond that spiritual roadblock that they may have in making their minds and bodies better? Okay, do anything or research on anything, Google on anything that helps keep you motivated. You can look for an inspiration figure, but ultimately the inspiration figure is yourself. Okay, you can't, you can't search the world for a motivational person and stick to this person for the rest of your life. Because day in and day out, you look into the mirror, it is yourself. You can't be somebody else because you're not created to be somebody else. So my point is, I do not wake up feeling like, oh, today I'm going to you know, have a clean, uh, good diet, I'm going to eat well, I'm going to train hard, uh, just because I feel like doing it. Even I don't feel like doing it, I have to do it. Because if I decide I want to do this, I have to do it. I do not go by my feelings. So I want to encourage the ladies because feelings to men and women is very deceitful. <laughs> okay, we don't live by our feelings. Because if we live by our feelings, we get into trouble. You know, I feel lousy today. You know, I feel that this person is uh, not trustworthy. I feel that this is not going to happen. This is not going to blah, blah, blah. You know, so I think faith is important. Uh, trusting and believing. So we hear about like, um, you know, before you want something to happen, you have to contain it in the mind. So it's the same thing. Yeah. Uh, we don't wake up feeling inspired, but we need to create the inspiration. I like that. I like that. In other words, you have to have faith in yourself. Yep. And you have to use yourself as a mentor. Yes. Now, in saying that, have you ever relapsed or fallen off the horse and had to get back up again? Okay, uh, that's my personal story. Since you're well, here. We, we, you, we, <laughs> yeah, okay, you don't have to go like into all the details, but we would really like to know something. I think this this is a very good sharing. Mm. How did I really find a real identity of myself? Is because I went into an eating disorder. Eating disorder. Yes, it, it is worse than bulimia. Meaning to say, I, I overeat and I do not perch out. So I'm eating like 24 hours continuously, like for a few weeks, until I reach a bottom peak, whereby I, I just want to just end my life. And everyone was asking me, how did this ever happen? I mean, you're on the stage with a good body, and the next moment you're under a depression. The question is, if you ask me why did this happen, I would say it happened for a good reason. Because if this would not have happened, you know, I wouldn't have um, reached that level whereby I felt so helpless. You know, because I'm someone with so much confidence, but at that moment I just felt so helpless that I need to depend very much spiritually, um, you know, on our Creator to really help help me to get out of that peak I am in. And then when I start to Google and research, and I found out, oh, actually I'm not the odd one out. There's so many people who are having depression, but it's just that people don't share it. You know, the body bodybuilding scene is like um, all about fame, looking good, but nobody shares the underlying problems that you will face. Like for instance, after a competition, you know, it's easy to get rebound. Um, it's why? Easy why, to get why, is depression. It, why is it easy to get depressed or rebound, even though, like you said, you have all that stage and fame? Yes. What is it about that that's not enough? Uh, I think this is an important factor that all the ladies have to know. Okay, uh, I wouldn't say it's a price to pay, but you need to learn over the years how to control the diet and the training and how, how to control the rebound. Like my first, first few competitions, the rebound is scary. Like within a week, I rebound like 10, 15 kg. Yeah. And, and at that moment, for the first time, you know, like six years ago, I, I wouldn't be able to accept it. It's like, what on earth am I, am I doing like standing on stage with a six pack the next, the next one week? I don't even dare to step out of my door. <laughs> I'm sorry, like, but yeah, I mean it just... Yeah, but, but why is this yeah. person like eating like a, you know, she's just came up from, from jail. You know, she's not stopping and, and why can't I control it when I have so much self-discipline when I'm preparing for my comp? 
Yeah, then, then I get to, you know, learn over time. Psychologically, it affects us um, from what expect might be, you know. There's a lot of findings. Psychologically, it affects us because of the food, because maybe of the strict um, food type or whatever that we need to eat. Then when the competition is over, we slack because the purpose is, has been, has been, you know, it's, has been fulfilled. So um, we don't have to train that much. We don't have to diet that hard. And then suddenly we don't have a purpose. It's easy to get off, off track. So is that it? It's that you didn't have a purpose after the bodybuilding. So what did you do in order to find a purpose? So in other words, that one goal when you went on stage was completed. Yes. And now something had to fill that void. So exactly. what was it that filled it for you? For me, it's um, after the depression, I realized that bodybuilding is not bodybuilding. What do you mean by that? That means bodybuilding is bodybuilding in a, in a deeper, deeper side. It's not just building the body, but it's building the character, building me mentally, physically, psychologically, you know, any kind of curly curly that you can find. <laughs> yeah, and I realize it's not about the sport. It's about, um, you know, how you carry that word bodybuilding so deep. It's like bodybuilding, what can you think about bodybuilding? It's not about building yourself, but building other, others, you know, building, bringing up, lifting up other people. So lifting up other people is what inspires you to yes. feel better, is that yes, it? Yes, correct. That's interesting. And who was it that, okay, before we, we'll, we'll talk about that stuff later. You know what I want to do? I want to find, because I know you're getting ready to go up to the panel to judge very soon. So you're getting ready to join another championship. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. And when is it happening? And why aren't you competing today? I'm not in a shape to compete today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay uh, I have not been competing in the local scene for a while. Okay, uh, ever since I stepped out of Singapore to compete. And um, I really enjoy the stage which is WBPF has been arranging. Uh, last year we were at Bhutan. Mm -hmm. And this year, the one that you are mentioning, we are uh, heading to Korea. Korea. So I hope you'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. Sometime in <laughs> August, yeah, okay. to bring out some live videos. Okay. Yeah, That's it's around the 20th, 20, 19th to 20th August. 19th to 20th August. That means it gives you roughly about four 14 months. 14 right? weeks. 14 weeks. Yeah. You see how they break that down? It's not <laughs> months, it's like yeah. weeks because yeah. every day is actually yes. important. So have you started your pre-contest yes, preparation now? I am in my prep now. Uh, I would say I'm moving on to my 13 weeks, <laughs> okay. which is today is uh, Sunday, right? Okay. Tomorrow, Monday. Yeah. Okay. So I'm moving into my 13 weeks. I'm mm -hmm. in my prep now. Excellent. So, from this point onwards, what do you hope to achieve when you go to Korea? Are you looking at winning the championship? Or are you looking at winning something much deeper? Okay. That's kind of like a loaded question. Last, huh? That's kind of bad. I'm sorry. No, I like your question. <laughs> <laughs> so, last year, uh, I was placed third at Bhutan. And this year, I hope I can get a better placement, of course. But um, ultimately, for me, throughout every competition, it's not about uh, getting the goal. Because the goal is in me, I can be placed first, but you know, looking at the second uh, placing, I can say, oh, this girl looks better than me. But if I, I know where I stand, I know my identity, I know how much effort I put in, it doesn't matter whether I place first, second or third, I know I hold a goal. Yeah. Excellent. Yes. All right. Mad. Thank Kim, you so much. We'll talk to you later on. We'll see you down there and we'll tap on your shoulder. And if there's anything that you want to go ahead and reach out to uh, anyone who's watching live right now, um, or if, if they have comments, folks, if you have comments, you have questions for Mad Kim. It's so hard for me to call her Mad because okay? she's, she's, she's far from being mad, except for when you think no, about by, it and making way, a difference, right? Okay, I, have yes. a, I have a gym. It's, mm -hmm. it's Mad Fitness Market. Oh, seriously? Okay, now tell them where your gym is. Oh, it's at Two Money Road. Okay. <laughs> Big promo here, Two yeah, Money right. Road. It's not about a promotion, but it's Met, no, that's good. I want Met Fitness Market. means making a difference uh, for a market that consists of people from all walks of life. Okay, so what? Okay, now what makes Mad different than some of the other box gyms? Why would they want to come to yours? Because Let them know. Just go ahead. Just go ahead and be viciously promo. <laughs> we are a market that is filled with love. We lift with love. Yeah, not lifting Maybe ourselves, but you. we lift one Maybe another. You. And um, yeah, in this place, it's full of hope. And uh, interestingly, our clients are people with a lot of medical conditions. So it's like my prayer comes true. 
uh, God sends me all the people with a lot of condition, back condition, heart condition. Yeah, but somehow we get together knowing that you know we can go beyond science. If we truly put our heart, you know, to do something, we can always change life. That is brilliant, folks. What other reason? Not lifting with your body, but lifting with love. That is so awesome. Thanks a lot, Matt. We'll talk to you soon. Thank okay. You. All right, guys. You're welcome. All Thank right, you. folks. We're gonna let her go now. Okay. Take care. Enjoy. Okay. Wasn't that fantastic? That was okay. And the, the thing, the thing that was cool about that, folks, is, is this is not just about the technical aspects of uh, weightlifting or bodybuilding. It's not about nutrition. This is about the people. And like I said, that's what I want to do. I want to bring to you this whole aspect of being a person. Not the whole, you know, sure there's going to be winners today and there's going to be people who don't win. All right? But nevertheless, everyone has succeeded. They've succeeded in the way that they, they belong. They're, they're, they're bringing out a message, just like MAD was just doing. And um, so, folks, I'm going to bring on out of here, like I said, Every hour on the hour, we're going to have updates because, uh, first of all, my camera here doesn't have enough data or battery to last for four hours, and I'm really cheap, so <laughs> we're going to come back, and what I'll do is I'll type in a subtitle as to what we're going to be covering before that hour comes up, okay? And I think the time right now is, hang on, what is the time right now? Uh, let me check out. Okay, that's good. All right. Hold on, I'm trying to find the time. Okay, whatever it is, okay, whatever the time is. Whatever. Yes, we did, we did. And we're just, we're just finished. She was fantastic. Okay, absolutely wonderful. Thanks a lot. So, folks, we're going to be coming back at the hour, and then we'll talk some more then, all right? See you then.